Good morning, YouTube. I hope you had a wonderful week with your students. I'm in between periods. I have my prep period actually right now, and I'm in pretty good shape for my classes today, so I thought I'd use this opportunity to check in with you guys. Overall, it was a really good week. Definitely a little bit more busy than usual. Here in New Jersey, we do something called student growth objectives. So my student growth objectives are due today, actually. Basically, the idea is we have to set some sort of objective that the students can achieve. But in order to do that, most often we have to like plow through a lot of data, you know, compile and analyze a lot of data basically. And I need to spend time looking at where I think my students will be able to fall in terms of three tiers. And so we want them to obviously achieve the SGO. So we have to spend time thinking about what group of or tier are we going to put them in that will allow them to ultimately be successful for the objective. So it basically is like it's a lot of work to go through everything, but once it's done, it's done. Um, I would say the hardest part is just compiling the data and inputting it and then deciding where the tiers are going to go. And then we do have a check-in in the middle of the school year, and then I will submit the finalized SGO where basically the students, you know, we examine a large swath of instructional time and we can decide if the students did in fact meet the objective. But this video is not about my SGO. This video is on an incredibly simple strategy that you can use to transform your classroom from like more of a worksheet classroom to more of a collaborative effort, practice-based classroom. For those of you who have been following me for the last you know decade, you know that I didn't always start out as a student-centered teacher. I was a lot more teacher-centered in that my instruction was delivered via you know lecture in class and guided notes and then the students were using worksheets you know at the end of class to reinforce that content and practice the content it's taken me a while to finally feel comfortable where i am in you know selecting student-centered activities and designing student-centered activities but now you know instead of lecturing in class i'm flipping the lesson where i've recorded videos and the students are watching them outside of class and then the bulk of our class time is being used for problem solving but i'm not worksheeting them to death instead what i'm deciding to do is taking a lot of those worksheets and converting them into a task list so I got this idea for this video this week because I created a new turnkey course that I'm teaching at my school. It's called 10 Ways to Ditch That Worksheet. And so these are my 10 best ways. Some are easier than others. The one I'm going to talk about today is so easy, but um, some are easier than others. And basically it's just 10 ways to kind of get away from the worksheet and have your students practice in a more collaborative effort. If you're a big worksheet person like I was for a long time, I would say this is a great way to start and it is so easy. So this is an example of a task list that I do with my AP kids. All you do is you take your practice problems from a worksheet and you cut and paste them onto a task list. And so this template is something that I use over and over and over again for all my classes. And basically what the students do is they find a partner, they both grab two different colored markers, and I say different colors because I want to see who's doing what work, and then the students will line up in front of a whiteboard. And so at that whiteboard, the students will work the problems on the task list one by one. Now here's the thing, there's different models for how the students can work the problems. You could tell your students that they have to split the board in half and work the problem at the same time. You could have maybe the students trade off. Maybe one student does the first problem, a second student does the second problem. Or you could have students working on the same problem at the same time where they're both maybe working on the whiteboard. So really there's a lot of variations. I actually don't particularly care which one my students choose, but I do like when students kind of share the responsibility. I don't like when just like one student does all the work. This task list is amazing. It really has the students work together so much better. But to make this even better, I also make this a formative assessment. So how I keep track of what the students are doing is using something like this. So this is a um, like basically a checklist. And so on this checklist, we have the students' names on the left. So the colors come from the fact that I'm trying to make it easier for me to check off which problems they're working on, which problems they're done with. So I check off the problems as they complete them. Sometimes they'll do like one problem at a time. Sometimes they'll do two problems at a time. But basically this sheet serves as an, as an amazing formative assessment so I can keep track of exactly what the students are doing and you know there were a total of seven questions on the task list today and you can definitely tell like who's putting the work in outside of class because I had some students only get to question four 
I had some students only get to question five and they were working on this task list for about 45 minutes. And so I would say seven questions in 45 minutes, they should be able to get to that. It definitely helps you to kind of do a little bit more of a, an easier formative assessment, keep track of who's doing what. And then obviously when your students are working on whiteboards, you can help them. So if you're seeing they're you know, making mistakes and stuff, you can work with them, do maybe like a little mini lesson with them and help them out. So this was a wonderful way to end our week together on this Friday. I think that's it for me. This was a short and sweet video. I know the last couple of videos have been a little bit long, so I thought I'd give you a little bit of a break today, but I hope you had a wonderful week. I know for me, it's it's been a little bit of a grind. I'm looking forward to some fall break, which is coming up soon. Um, and I'll tell you what, um, I know the last couple of videos have been giving stuff away. Why not give something else away? So I'm going to give away a template um, just like this on my site. So if you go to MissRazChemClass.com, you'll be able to get a template that you can use with your kids. And I have to say, like, if you use this strategy in your class, send me an email. Tell me how it goes. Because when I get those emails, that keeps me doing what I'm doing every week. You know, it keeps me posting these videos. It keeps me wanting to help teachers. So if you end up using this strategy, tell me how it goes. I can't wait to see your emails. And as always, I hope you have a wonderful weekend and I'll be sure to check in with you guys next week.